Now, one of the interesting letter we find that uh, he was writing to his uh, great friend Jagadish Chandra Bosch's wife, Abula Bosch, that when I come to village, when I come to the rural, I become Indian. I understand what is India. So at that particular point of time, <coughs> after Jyotirindranath, Ravindranath, looking after Shilaida, Kushtia and others, he started thinking that I have to open up a kind of a school, which will be a nature-linked school and a rural reconstruction. And he got the permission. Now, what I'm, why I'm saying this, when Rabindranath came to Shantiniketan, he was prepared. He has seen the village by himself. So later on, we will find that he will talk Shantiniketan as a laboratory. In 1940 41, he will be saying that Shantiniketan is a laboratory. So that, that continuity of a continuum, that was the building period. The making of Rabindranath was in the eastern part of the Bengal. Then he comes to. We cannot forget the role of the Mrinalini Devi. I'm very frankly say, telling you, the Jorashako Thakurbadi Chabi, you know, Jorashako Thakurbadi administration was with her, Mrinalini Devi, such a trusted lady, wonderful, and trusted by Devendranath. Devendranath was leaving. Can anybody, Amra, I had an opportunity uh, working uh, in Jorashako Thakurbari restoration project for 10 years. So leaving Jorashako, going into a thatch cottage, the children and the wife, Rabindranath maybe yes, great, but they are also equally great. It's very difficult to convince that yes, let us go and leave Jorashako and I will have to go because the land, people, environmental melody I need to recreate. Baba Moshai has given me this. I have to fulfill his vision of Upanishad, Ananda Sharbo Kaje, Sharbo Sthane. That need to be, Upanishad need to be experimented at the ground with the people. And Vrindalini Devi, we call the women role. Today, we call the better environment role in the better environment, building the better environment. Mrinalini Devi, Kadambari Devi, series of womenhood in Jorashoka Thakurbadi. They are the responsible for this creation of the better built environment in a country during the Renaissance. And Mrinalini Devi, she left all her ornaments, everything given, sold for the poet's dream of a school. And I, there is no time now. Otherwise, I would have read some of the letter. What a sweet letter he was writing to his wife, Bhai Chuti. He's writing Bhai Chuti. And trying to convince her that why we should go to the motherland, the mother earth, living Jorashako, architect mansion. And what is our common goal of the life? How Roti should be brought up? If I talk these things to the contemporary family, even my family, they will agitate, they will revolt. But Rabindranath is equally lucky having such a grand family to support. So this is the first house Rabindranath built. Can you believe from Jurashako, from Shilaida, first being mud built and the thatch roof. Gandhiji, I had the rare opportunity in restoring this house. Gandhiji, with his Phoenix School team, when he came in 1914, he stayed here. So Gandhiji knew Rabindranath by heart. We may write many articles, but if you go through the built environment and Gandhiji and Rabindranath, it's a different equation you will find. We will discuss one day later on. So this is a place where the children, the family, and some of the teachers started living here. And this is the first brick-built house in 1904. Rabindranath did it. That is called Deholi. And uh, mind you, Shuren Babu, Nandulal, Rosindranath, the great triad. 
the maker of forms, they were not there. So how Rabindranath managed this and how he did it, that also I have documented. Vishwabharati has published it. So it's a very interesting, I, I had the opportunity of restoring this building also. It's absolutely, believe me, one room, only one room in the top, the first floor. And the ground floor, the, you know, the teachers used to stay. And the forefront, the classrooms. And this is the longest period he stayed here, from 1904 to 1919, before going to Uttarayan. He got the Nobel Award here in Deholi. When he said, Alpeto Onekta Hoy, and people ask me in the Western world, the Lace is More movement we started. I said, Tagore started in actual practice form. That's the difference. He said, OK, that's right. He said, what room? And that's a Nobel laureate. He got it. And he did it. He did it for the people around him. Dedicated himself and everything. He was teaching a thatch circular canopy and some bamboo or some timber trestles. He was teaching. I had the opportunity in writing some of the articles during Shagur Moy Ghosh's time. So one day he had a good mood. I think he was publishing my article that time, Shanti Niketan Laboratory or something like that. I think those articles have been compiled into the book, which is published by Government of West Bengal, Modhu Bata Ritayate. All are published by the Shagur Moy Ghosh. I will never find a Shagur Moy Ghosh in my life. The great blessings in my life. One day he was in a good mood, and I was asking, um, after he finished his thing, I said, uh, can I, sir, ask you one question, sir? He said, Bolo, ki, ki. Rabindranath came on Kure Parachan. Huh? You know, Deshpotika, those days, you know, the galaxies are sitting. So, in that grey uh, glass chamber, he was sitting. He said, Huh? Rabindranath, how he was teaching? Teacher Rabindranath. So, that's a wonderful story. I will, I will have an opportunity, otherwise, I'll not be able to finish up. Like, you know, they said, uh, we don't have the fund with us, Rabindranath went on saying, but we have the land with us. Like Jagadandara, Kiti Mohan Shem, we are taking classes, you know. Now, incidentally, we are now all over the world, all over the world, we are now going back to this, which Tego started in 1901. We are now going back to this open with the nature. This is the land cover very intelligently done by Krothindranath Tagore. He's a product of Shanti Niketan, the first batch, and the product, final product of the Illinois Urbana Champan. So he applied his mind, and we are now talking about the green cover, cover all over the world. But this is the, the, the job done by Krothindranath and others during 1914, 1915. It has now crossed 100 years, sir. The first windmill, perhaps in Asia, the first, installed by Rabindranath. Actually by Rabindranath, in Shantiniketan. Red Cross windmill, two Red Cross windmill was installed because Rabindranath had a connection with the Red Cross windmill in USA. And it was installed. And we are talking about the alternate energy. We are talking about the Environment friendly living style, environment friendly engineering, but Shanti Niketan is again a teacher of this. This is called urban forestry. We are all over the world. We are now thinking how to create the urban, semi urban forestry because the forest cover is getting lost, is losing the harmony, the forest cover. So, how to develop that? So, the recreational gardening and the urban forestry were the experimentation of Shantiniketan built environment. This is Chatim Tala, the Uposhana. This is how the people are you know, settling on the tree. And the tree is the, you know, the guardian. They are above top of everything. But if you go to Pausha Utsav and any Utsav, you won't find any difficulty 
in sitting there and having this. And they don't have the auditorium. They don't, they don't need any amphitheater, but they did it. So Uttarayan, Rabindranath is entering to Uttarayan. The role of the water, role of the sky vault, the sun, the laterite, the land, is now coming in a comprehensive manner in Konarka. Konarka, this red veranda is also performing stage. Notir Puja was performed here. The interesting part of the Shankaniketan architecture, the built environment is that it has a multiple, multiple function, multiplicity. It is institutional, it is a residential, it is a cultural, it is a performing. So we call it an elasticity into an element which is called expansive space. The whole world is now talking about the expansive space because we cannot cover up the earth anymore because the other two kingdoms are suffering every day. So we need to look about this. So this is one of the aspects. Another beautiful aspect you can see that you know they have kept the laterite in front of the laterite, they have kept it that way as laterite. And some of the zonation of the green, you know, as a green. As I told you, Shantiniketan those days, I repeat those days, they created a lot of walker friendly walkways. Why? One is the comfortability. Today all over the world again we are coming back to the earth. We say there is too much of, uh, you know, heated, too much of earth warming, global warming. We need to be more ecologic. This is also the classroom. You know, that is also the classroom of the Tejas Chandrashen. He was the teacher of the nature study, Prakriti Vigyan Paratan. So he, that was his classroom. He was walking through that, you know, the lens, which was a built environment, which was created to have a lyrical mind like Kopai River. If you look at the Kopai River, if you look at the nature of the swing of the river, the, the graphics of the river, and if you look at this kind of an avenue, the Walker's Avenue, that we should be proud of it, you will find that kind of a same ideology which had been taken here. Look at this, wonderful, that you know something is built, something is unbuilt, something is only built. And today the environmental architecture or ecologic architecture more are leaning towards the greater relationship of the built, unbuilt, and omnibuilt. So now this is one of the examples which was created by the great triad, Ranjunda is here, Ranjunda can also tell me, I don't know whether India had produced again such combination of Rathindranath, Nandulal, and Shurenkar. Am I right? Such a great triad. I don't think. Uh, this is also very historical evolution, that how this triad took up their own mind and put their mind into an action and form making of Shantiniketan. This is the, of the, their work. You may ask this question, we'll go to the channels. You may ask me this question that, uh, do you think that uh, Rabindranath always interfered into such things? Otherwise, how the Tagorean flavor is created just like that? Believe me, believe me, I went through from 1992, yes, uh, with all the archives in our nation and international uh, searching especially Tagore Geddes relations and others and Tagore. I never found any, any, any such instruction in a letter that uh, this is a house I don't like or this is a design I don't like or you do I like this. But each and everything they are creating, Rabindranath used to stay there. He will be staying for months to realize and he may not say anything but he will write some letter, some poetry, some short stories, some painting it will be expressed. So it is, a, it is a kind of a, what should I say, a ripples of rhythms which have been created, which are now finally formed into Udayana. 
Udayana is one of the expression of an expression of 20th century architecture of India. When I talked to Bal Krishna Doshi, I said, sir, we have been talking about 19th century, 18th century, 17th century, 16th century. All right, we learn everything. But do you think, sir, we are talking less about in 20th century architecture of India by the Indians, by the broad-hearted East-West comprehension, East-West unity? There was a no narrowism. International stalwarts like Geddes, like Elmhurst, like Pearson, like Andrews, they were there. And the people from other states, Vaman Rao, Achari, Konosan from Japan, Kasahara, they all put together their mind how to create a flavor of an Indian architecture, yet it's a part of the world architecture. And as you know, in the world today, the Frank Lloyd Wright's work with Ado Udayon that's a competitive study is going on. Two things, sir. Uh, I think you will not be impatient. Uh, give me a couple of... Two things I would like to mention here. This is the time Rabindranath was reviewing a book of architecture. Very rare in his life. The Manasara. My son is also studying this book. He had to study this book in architecture. Manasara P.K. Acharjo. Just the book was appeared. It was a very lean, thin book. This is unthinkable about Rabindranath. How he used to keep, this is not the digitized world, the track of the whole thing. He got this book, Pikacharjo, Allahabad. He was writing Indian book of architecture. This book of architecture, Indian architecture, book of Indian architecture. Rabindranath went on saying many people that this should be reviewed. This book should be reviewed. He could not find anybody. Nobody contributed. He himself written the review of this book in Vishwabharati quarterly. Sir, madam, please go through this review. I, I, I hope, I, I think maybe you have already gone through. It's a wonderful thing he has said. He has challenged the history. He has said that the history is not just rattling bones. It is not the konkale tok tokani. If I don't find the flesh, if I don't find that heart, if I don't find the society as if living, then for me it's very difficult to understand. So this is one aspect. So he wanted